Yo there guys, this is Cobb and welcome to Dueling with Cobb, the series in which you guys get the chance to appear in the video, going up against me in a 1v1 encounter. I'll be talking through the duels as we go, mentioning stuff I could have done better as well as things I think my opponents did well. My first opponent of this episode is a warrior called Evelyn. We had an amazing series actually, and, and I believe you'll be able to see them all from his perspective over on his YouTube channel, which I will be linking in the description below. I'm playing with a service succubus spec so I can try and disarm him with my mini void walker and I'm also spec into sacrificial pack. Now you'll notice I start the duel with my pet placed away from both me and my pole. So me, my pole and my pet make a kind of triangle shape and this is so my pet doesn't get hit by any AoE fears or stuns while she's casting and so I can stay within range of my port should I need it. I try and seduce him on his charge here but I'm a bit late with it so I take a little bit of damage. I do get some distance on him though before setting up some basic damage. Unfortunately for me though I don't land any blood horrors or shadow furies on him before he starts blade storming and as a result I have to just port lower. Now I do manage to seduce his charge pretty well this time around but he does make an awesome play and he fears me as the seduce lands so I don't get anything off while I have him control. And as a result he beats my ass a little bit more before I finally land a blood horror. He trinkets this though keeping the pressure on me and what I should have done here was shadow furied and gone for some counter pressure I feel. Instead he has time to pop die by the sword so this dark soul is destined to be kind of weak. I also should have chaos bolted on the shadow fury stone I think. Regardless he does eventually feel it's time to pop shield wall and here I make a mistake that I never ever want to hear any of you guys doing ever. Um, it kills me inside just watching it back. In my disheveled state of mind, my heels already on cooldown, I decide to howl Evelyn. This is unforgivably horrible because not only can he just Zerka rage to break this fear, but I've also just put my pet seduce on Dia, and all in the name of landing a 19k crit incinerate. I redeem myself slightly here by seducing him on his Stormbolt, so he gets no uptime during this stun, but my fate is all but sealed. This is because this seduce could have been full and I could have been landing a Chaos Bolt here, potentially changing the outcome of the duel completely. But it's too late for that. Um, Evelyn is gonna go ham. I pop a shield wall and Blood Horrid just desperately trying to exist. But with Seduce now so diard, I can't even really stop him from reconnecting. I also summon my mini Voidwalker so late that by the time he's done just flopping around like a blueberry and actually makes the effort to disarm Evelyn, the fight is already lost. In this second here duel I've switched to Supremacy Grimoire and Soul Link spec to see if it allows me to tank damage any better. And this duel kicks off in a very very similar way, I land a perfect opening seduce this time though. And it's always really really good if you can have the warrior use a gap closer before you seduce so they have less ways to catch you once your CC is over. I don't want to trinket this first storm bolt so I edge my pet in to knock him back just to stop a little bit of his damage. Out of this I fell flame his spell reflect before landing a blood horror um, which to my dismay the gods decide is going to break so I port the way and hit seduce at the same time to CC him on his charge. In this duel I do make sure to shadow fury him with my first dark soul up and although there is no chaos bolt I managed to get off more damage this time around before he does eventually pop die by the sword. I take a blade storm to the face here but I'm not too worried as I have my heals still ticking and shortly after he's going to have to use shield wall. Now here is another major contrast between the first and second duel. This time when I seduce him on his storm bolt, it is not DR'd by a random howl of terror. So I should be able to sit this stone and take a kill out of it. Evelyn has other plans though. Um, he sees what's coming and he trinkets the seduce and like a boss, he reflects my blood horror instantly. So the duel is suddenly far from over. I do pop unending resolve but he doesn't give a damn, he pops all of his offensives to go in for the kill. So needless to say my ass was clenching a little bit here but I do manage to get him back under control. I should have popped my second Dark Soul a little bit earlier here, it would have definitely helped. Um, he reflects a pet seduce but I do just about manage to land it giving me enough time to finally finish him off. A very very close duel for sure though, um, as most of the duels that we had were. After doing those I'd have to recommend Soul Link when facing warriors at least, um, it gives you much much more tankiness. I didn't lose a duel while using it and I lost every time I used Sacrificial Pack. Now next up is Antoni the Rogue, better known as Unknown according to my UI and if you want to see more duels from his point of view do check out his channel which is also going to be linked in the description. 
So I start out the duel in a similar position to my pet as I did when facing the warrior. I don't want my succubus getting kicked on any of our casts. And like I do against almost all rogue openers when I can, I have up Twilight Ward, Whiplash to knock him back and I pop Sack Pact very early on. This is of course because of Sack Pact's 1 minute cooldown, I want it back on cooldown again as soon as possible. After getting up an Immolate, I'm looking to Blood Horror him, but I don't want him to immune it with his cloak, so I wait until he's just about to hit me before using it. I get the sense that he wants to go offensive now, so I throw out a mini service blueberry that will hopefully at some point disarm him. And I make sure to part lower when he cloaks, and after looking at my health, I decide to be safe and use my heals just to make sure I'm not devastated by his reopener here. My Voidy does actually get off a disarm though at just the right time, which does negate a good amount of his opening damage. So now Antony has used Cloak, I'm looking to go offensive now in earnest. Um, I Howl, which I know he might trinket, and he does, and I have Shadow Fury ready to go. So I should have Dark Souled here um, on this Chaos Bolt while he was stunned. I feel I'm still getting used to having two Dark Souls right now with Archimon's Darkness. But it's still good damage anyway. And um, right here he pops Shadow Blades to try and counter pressure, so I use Blood Horror right away and even use Inending Resolve too. It's just as well as he reconnects pretty fast and I trinket here and I portal away. I don't want to be taking any damage at all while he has CD as powerful as Shadow Blades up. After he vanishes, I'm a little bit worried about his reopener, so I spend an ember on some ember tap healing because I popped Sack Pack so early in the duel. It is also ready to go again right here, so I use it to negate some of his opening damage. And now I have Howl, Shadow Fury and Blood Horror all back up again so closing out this fight shouldn't be too much of a problem. Again I pop Dark Soul a little bit late and um, he blinds me to shut down a little bit of my damage while my CDs are up and though he does get me a little bit low I feel I would have been okay as I still had Shadow Fury left to spend. I feel like Antony went for a slower paced control oriented fight plan and um, which is usually okay for rogues, um, you wear someone down without really popping much, then once they've used some CDs you destroy them with big offensive cooldowns. Warlocks have so much 1v1 control though in 5.4, I'm not sure rogues can win a CC battle against us anymore. And um, what does scare us warlocks though, especially against melees, is massive opening damage. If you make yourself unpeelable while training us into the ground, we are instantly on the back foot. The biggest example of this is a DK with every offensive CD popped while he has Lich Bond or Anti-Magic Shell up. And once a melee starts using defensive cooldowns to stay offensive with, we are usually in big big trouble. The last duels today are with Kixo on his Ellie Shaman Buffet. Now I feel Destro counters Ellie Shamans pretty hard, we have so many ways of shutting down their damage. And so right away here I get Capstone. It's definitely not the best start. But I feel I don't need to trinket this as he has no instant procs. So I hold on to that for now but as usual I do use Sack Pact early here just so I can use it again a little bit sooner. And right from the get go I pop a very very early Dark Soul looking to get his Shamanistic Rage forced early and I spell lock his first Lava Burst. And this is because I have two spell locks when playing with the Sacrifice Grimoire with a Fell Hunter. I have a guide on how to do this you can find a link to that in the description. I pump up some basic damage here. And I do get a Shamanistic Rage, I don't spell lock those heals. I'm saving my second spell lock very very deliberately for when he uses Ascendance. Now I make a key play here. Um, I Mortal Coil and go for a Fear. And even though he does run in a straight line away from me, um, outranging the Fear, he instinctively hits his Tremor Totem. This is really really big as Tremor now has a 1 minute cooldown in 5.4 for Shamans. So my next fear should be able to get his trinket. So I start to back off a little bit now. And what I'm really doing is trying to have him push in to where my pole is laid. So I can pole in and land an easy Howl of Terror. I hold onto my spell lock through them heals before porting in and landing that Howl. He has no tremor so he has to trinket this. Now he has Ascendance up. So I tried to spell lock him but he actually switched to the Restoration 4 set PvP gear. This makes his Spirit Walker's Grace also act as an Aura Mastery spell so he actually immunes my spell lock. Definitely a good play by him and um, as soon as I realise what's happening I pop my heals and flames of Zoroth my Fell Puppy back up. Then after making sure to get past his Grounding Totem I do land the spell lock on his Lava Burst and it's definitely better late than never. Now out of this I am ready to go in for the kill. I pop Unending Resolve and Dark Soul. He misses his Capstone Totem but I did have my Trinket ready for that one. I know he has no Trinket or Tremor still so I throw out a Coil and land some big Dark Soul damage. 
Out of this, I'm going to charge him down to land that Howl of Terror that is going to finish off the duel, as he can't be breaking himself out of that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed episode 2 of Dueling with Cobb. It's a very, very fun series to record, and I hope to keep it running for a long time to come. As I promised to Buffett, I'm going to let the video play out to one epic duel we had, just with music, so you can stay behind and check that out if you like. But for now, that is going to be all from me. Don't forget to leave your like behind on this video if you did enjoy it. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'm going to catch all of you guys later.